Hello everybody, thanks for joining in. Uh, it is uh, Thursday and uh, 19th of October. And uh, what are the news? Uh, you followed probably what happened in Gaza, the bombing of the hospital. And uh, what I'd like to do is just to put everything to perspective, just going back a little bit into history, the creation of Israel. And, uh, and up to now, what are happening, uh, what are happening these days, and also the fake news that we are hearing. Uh, again, thanks for joining in. Uh, I see 16 people. So you feel free to, to send questions, to put some comments on the chat. And towards the end, I will try to ask answer to your questions. Um, I want to go back to a little bit to history. Uh, I came across a very interesting video that I will actually post into the description section of the video. And um, this video is a, uh, that's a, a scholar, Arab scholar that is actually explaining that in 1907, the, the British Empire, uh, officials of the British Empire, uh, they, they had a meeting and they were very worried because the Arab nations, they, they discovered the oil and oil was the future. There was a, uh, they saw that uh, this transition going from coal to oil and whoever had oil would actually control, potentially could control the world. And they saw this uh, Arab nation. Uh, for them was extremely dangerous because the resources, all resources, but also it was monolithic. You see, when you look at Europe, Europe is actually an art artificial entity. There's many different cultures, many different languages. What unites the Arab world is common religion, also common language. So they were very worried. And they said, we are looking for a foreign entity. I, re I repeat, 1907. We are looking for a foreign entity. We are not talking about Israel back then. And there's a person called uh, Weizmann. Weizmann, he comes in and says, we can be Israelis, Jews can be that foreign entity. Why do they need this foreign entity? It was actually to be there, to be a Nabi base, a forefront from the, for the British Empire, to divide and conquer the whole region, to analyze how we could divide the Arab world, religions, you know, divisions. There, you know, within the Arab world, you can find divisions. Of course, you know, you if you focus on on the differences, then you can you 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 can divide people rather than when you focus on commonalities. And that's what they did. That's what they did. So Weizmann he came in and he said. We can do the dirty job for you. So this is where people make the huge mistake saying, well, you know, the Jews actually control the West. They control, you know, they used to control the British and the, and the US and so on. I think I don't go into this conspiracy. I think it's just too far-fetched. 1907, then you have 1917. I mean, just critical days. There are lots of things happening in between, and lots of personalities. There's Herzl. There's a, you know, this this community of uh, wealthy Jews that actually are looking to creating uh, uh, Israel. 1970s, uh, 17. You have this declaration, Balfour Declaration. So you had actually the Germans, Austro-German Empire that actually was fighting the Allies. And they, because there was this transition, you had this emerging power, and they were actually side. They were actually together with the Austro, uh, with the, the the Ottoman Empire. The, the Ottoman Empire was where the oil was. So the Germans, they actually were emerging power, and they had access because they were partnering with the the Ottoman Empire. They had access to the oil. There was back then a line between what they call the Baghdad ban it would be a railway line from Baghdad all the way to Berlin. And it would transport oil. But then in between what they did, you know, there was something happening in Serbia, right? 
this assassination. I, I won't go into the details, but there was, you know, it was oil already back then. 1917, the US was not yet into war. You have this be meeting between Lord Balfour, a British MP, British politician, and Lord Rothschild. See, I mean, there's no conspiracy theory here. Lord Rothschild, one, the richest family, extremely powerful, representing Wall Street bankers. And uh, the deal was very simple. If they managed to get the US into war, because the US was anti-war, they were into isolation. They didn't want to go into war back then. But if Rothschild would get all the Wall Street bankers, would push them to, to, uh, to push the US to go into war, then there was this deal between the British Empire and the Zionists to create an Israeli, you know, a uh, state of Israel at the expense, at the expense of the Palestinians. But keep in mind that the Palestine was populated mostly by Arabs and there were Jews already there, but they were living at peace. They've been living at peace for hundreds of years until you have the Zionist movement that actually moves in and stab the Arabs on the back because the Arabs, they, they took them in. Even in after World War II, you see, there's lots of refugees coming in. And they say, well, you know, we can take you in. I mean, you know, just, uh, but again, we, we live together and uh, that's okay. We, we do understand. But it's not the Arabs that actually genocided the Jews. You know, they had nothing to do with that. And also very important, you need to understand also, you know, the nature of, uh, of the Jews. You have, uh, you know, Ashkenazi, you have Sephardi. Sephardi are more like uh, Northern Africa, you know, like more like uh, uh, dark skin Jews. Then you had the Ashkenazi. The Ashkenazi, they cannot claim to be from the original 12 tribes. They were converted Jews from Poland, Ukraine, Russia. They were converted because in the Middle Ages, those people, they were pagans. And uh, the only way to survive was to choose a religion, religion and they, had, they chose Judaism just because otherwise they would be persecuted. As pagans, they would be persecuted by Christians and Muslims. So they invented that history of a link between those Ashkenazi Jews, which are actually the majority, to the land of Israel. And this is actually, when I mention this, this is, there's a very interesting book called uh, The Invention of the People of, of, uh, of Israel. And this is Professor Shlomo Sand of Tel Aviv University. So nothing anti-Semite or so on. This is a university professor of Tel Aviv. I repeat, Shlomo Sand, The Invention of the Jewish Nation. And also, if you're interested in the history of the creation of Israel, there's a very good book called Old Jerusalem. This whole process, what happened before 1948, 1948 and the wars, successive wars of Israel. And all the wars since 1948 were, were all about grabbing land and displacing Arab Palestinians population. And guess what? What is happening right now in Israel, in Palestine, is exactly the same. This is an opportunity for Israel to get rid of more Palestinians, grab more land. And ultimately, the objective is a greater Israel. Just think about the last 50 years where the wars happened in the whole region. Syria. There was war so against Egypt, Jordan. Jordan joined the, the Six Day War. Lebanon. Did I say Iraq? Iraq too? Well, guess what? Greater Israel is from the Nile to the Euphrates. And it encompasses part of all those countries. 
So it's no coincidence that you, we had wars in those countries. What, why do you think, you know, there was a war in Syria? That's part of the plan, the greater Israel plan. And Israel has started grabbing land, right? You have some lands that actually now has been taken from small part, small proportion into Lebanon, the farm of Sheba. You have the Golan Heights that belongs to Syria. So again, very important to put that into perspective. And again, you see, I, I, I mentioned that last time, the false flag, I don't believe it that false flag, but I think people right now are just believing what they want to see. See, the pro-Palestinians, they're like, you, we know what, Hamas is great. It's great, you know, we, it's great. We are having that, that moment of, of satisfaction because of all those years of humiliation, we are humiliating the Zionist. See, I didn't say Israelis. For me, they're Zionists, they're occupiers, they're apartheid, racist states. That's what they are. So that's what the pro-Palestinians are seeing. On the other side, Israelis, vengeance, angry. How did it happen? But nobody has a cool-headed mind to say, well, well, you know, was it maybe a bait that was given to Hamas? How there was no intervention for six hours when Ukraine cross Gaza in 45 minutes by helicopter, when you have one of the strongest armies, strongest intelligence in the world, when you cannot, anything that comes very close to the fence gets identified right away. So my opinion, I'm not saying that Hamas actually did the dirty job on behalf of Israel. That's a that's far-fetched. But Israel willingly put the bait on Hamas, and Hamas took the bait. We need to go back to history. Israel and the U.S. and also Qatar funded Hamas. Why? Because they needed to build a radical opposition so they could justify not to make peace and to grab more land to point out that Hamas, they are radicals, they are terrorists. That's how, that was the, the strategy. So they propped up Hamas. That's how they did. You know, those creation, creation of ISIS, Al-Qaeda and so on, who created them? Al-Nusra? Always the West. But then Hamas is turning against Israel. Again, Hamas is a legitimate force. If is, is Palestinians are backing Hamas, then it's a legitimate, legitimate force. And very important, it's a force of liberation. But you see, what I'm saying right now is very sensitive because right now in Europe, especially in France, if you are saying that Hamas is a force, force of liberation, as Hamas is, is recognized by the collective West as a terrorist organization, saying that puts you in jail for one year. Do you know why? Because that is considered apology of terrorism. So I need to be really careful. And so I think long-term what they will do, they will issue laws that anti-Zionist would be considered anti-Semitism. So you see, you can't do much. The globalist elites are backing Israel. They shut, they're closing completely an eye on this genocide, disgusting genocide that is happening under our eyes. They are killing civilians, women and children. You had a vote at the UN, four countries voted against at the Security Council, Japan, France, UK, and the US. Well, let me tell you, you are accomplice to a genocide. Time will come that we'll have a second Nuremberg trial. And you see where I'm extremely upset is that they have been brutalizing the Palestinians because of the whining. Oh, we suffered. We had the Holocaust. You know what? We've been fucking brainwashed the whole time, all the time about this Holocaust and so on. 
That's not an excuse to massacre people like this. It's not. And you're losing completely credit and respect. You know, there's so many things that are actually are very common between those Zionists and uh, the Nazis. The Nazis, they called Lebensraum. Lebensraum is the viable land that you need to, to have a sustainable society. So Hitler wants to expand because, you know, it's a, growing, it's a growing population. We need more land, Lebensraum, in order to survive. But Israel is the same, expanding to greater Israel because Israel is too small. In order to be a viable state, you need to be bigger. Then the Nazis, there's an Aryan sense of superiority. We are the best. We don't mix with others. But you know what? Well, Zionists are the same. We are the elected people. And also, they just make sure that you, they cannot mix. You see, many actually Israelis, if they want to marry Jews and Arabs, they, they, you know where they go? They go to Cyprus. That's how racist that system is. And again, I'm saying Zionist. If I say Jews, maybe you know, it might slip my tongue. It's not. It's Zionist. Jews, I have nothing. You know, I, they're brothers. There's actually Jews and, and Arabs are all Semite people. You just look look it up, the definition of Semite, you know, they're all the same. What I'm saying is that they are the same. And it's not even a race, it's a religion. And it's a religion. It's not a race, you know. I, I, I don't, it's the first time in, in history that actually we, we are talking racism against a religion, you know. But you know, there's two standards. You can burn the Quran, but you cannot protest against... Israeli aggression. How ridiculous is that? Quran is about peace. You know, it, it's it's a respectable book, right? You are insulting billions of people by burning the Quran. Then, when you're calling for peace in Gaza to stop the genocide of Palestinians, then you are put into prison. So that's how the collective West is. And now I want to touch all those, those fake news. But just go back, you know, how historically everything has been based on fake news. Weapon of mass destruction. How many times have we been lied to? How many times? All the time. And you know what? You still have average Joe that is fucking believes in those lies. Why? Because average Joe is being, you know, fed... Not only is in a, in a, in a, is in a survival mode, you know, he, he's struggling, you know, and then uh, he comes back, he drinks, you know, he takes some drugs and so on, and then he's like in front of Fox TV, and there you go, you know, and, and wa watch Netflix and porn. That's what, but that's what the system wants, right? So weaponless mass that's destruction, right? The baby incubator of Kuwait, in Kuwait, remember, you had this declaration of... Uh, the daughter of the Kuwaiti ambassador in Washington. She said, oh, they threw the baby incubators on the floor. And you know what? We, that's how, that was the trigger to go to war. And we, we, all, we find out later on that she was coached by a PR firm. Then you had the Bucha massacre in Ukraine, supposedly massacre. We find out that those people were actually pro-Russians. And they were killed by the Ukrainians when they came in as a retaliation for being collaborators. Ukraine and Libya, two fake, stor two, two fake stories about raping while taking Viagra. Fake stories. But you know what? You tell the lie one time and everybody hears it and so on. And then you retract. But, you know, it's just a... It's just a small line saying, oh, we're sorry, just that was a mistake. Most people won't say it. Russia blowing its own gas pipeline. How ridiculous is that? Nord Stream being destroyed by Russia. How many people still believe that? And now, 
Hamas bombing its own hospital in Gaza? Are you going to fall for that? I think it's just, this, this, you know, it's just uh, absurd, completely absurd. Well, what I wanted to do here, you guys know I've been in China for 30 years, so I kind of know, but it's, it's just, you know, I just know it naturally. I didn't have to go to school, but just day to day, I mean, to school to, to, to learn about, you know, the differences between cultures, you know, because I just lived it, you know, it's just, for me, it's just, it has become natural. And I, I had to step back and just try to analyze what, you know, how I was thinking before as a Westerner and how, you know, how I'm, I'm seeing things now. And actually, at the subconscious level, a lot of things influence me because I've been living in Asia and I, I've, I've seen the different perception. But I want, I want to show you here about those different culture and perceptions, how they shape those countries and how actually the West, the collective West has a very bad influence and potentially could be really bad for the world as an outcome. It's a wrong project. Israel, with the help of the US right now, is doing one of the biggest crimes against humanity. We all agree on that. It's a crime against humanity, it's nothing else. They lo they're lost against, uh, they're losing against Russia, conventional army, they're being humiliated. NATO is being humiliated in Ukraine. It's not a Ukraine against Russia. It's a humiliation of NATO. Then now they're flexing muscles against civilian population. How brave is that? Fucking cowards. You are bombing children and women defenseless is that brave why because you need enough ramp because you're losing in ukraine that's why and because you need to expand you u.s empire is falling and you need to create cases of war and you're pushing pushing because you need to have the whole nations in, in the arab world to be so upset so they go to war to you against you and you hope to win. So you see, while they're destroying, they're making crimes against humanity, you have in China 140 countries that are gathering. You know for what? For one of the biggest infrastructure projects in human history. You see, one of the biggest crimes against humanity, one of the biggest projects in infrastructure in the world humanity, human history. So you see some, then you have, so some destroy, some build. Some talk and lecture and some do. Let me explain that. China goes to Africa, they build schools, they build hospitals, they build roads, infrastructure. Americans go to Africa, they give lectures about LGBTQ plus and PD, whatever, and lectures about human rights and democracy. They give lecture. So you got a token lecture against doing. Some do movies about how good they are, you see? The way it's about perception. West is about perception. A politician is about perceptions. I'm going to tell you what you want to hear. Perception. What I do after, it doesn't matter. The East, and especially right now, you have China leading. They are the change they want to see in the world. They embody that change. Multipolar world, what does it mean? It means everybody, every country will have a voice. That's real democracy. Some have a sense of superiority. That's the West. No, this sense of being el the elected people. The US, they call it manifest destiny. 
you know, the East, well, they're humble, you know, just to show off. Is it all about myself? No. Western culture, it's white or black. There's no nuance. East, you know, this, this yin and yang, it's more nuanced. It's not Manichaean. You know, Mani, Mani was a preacher, you know, but he was all about black and white. How antagonizing is that? World is duality. Play with that. It's a mix. Man, woman. Ego, spirituality. But it's not all in. A person is a mix of ego and spirituality. If it's too much ego, you lose the purpose. If it's too spiritual, you just sit down and do nothing. You see, it's, you need to have a balance. In the West, it's divided and conquer. You see, Western democracy, it's divided and conquer. You know, it's, it's, it's a system to, to divide people so you can control them better. The East is about a concept what, look for what unites us and set aside the differences. Look for compromises. The West is about the individual. Me, myself, and I. The East is about looking for the collective good. But it's historical. It's just because there's a huge population, little resources. You need to think about the collective. The West thinks in short term election cycles. The East can make plans, long term plans for the next generation. Short sighted versus long sighted, long term plan. The West wants to export its values. Well, because we are the best, of course. The East is about live and let live. Focus on ourselves. What is happening next door? Who cares? If we are doing well, maybe they can copy us. You know, they can be inspired by us. If you do well, if you have good values, if the West has good values, well, we'll go to the West and see what can be good. The, the, the West is about a winner-take-all. There's a system of democracy. That's the mob rule. 51% can take it all at the expenses of the 49%. The East is about how can we make it win-win. Politically, I may win. I might have the majority. But you know what? I need to take into account the others. I lead the democracy. But somehow, it's for the whole people. You are president, not for the Democrats or the Republicans, but you are president for the whole American people. Well, that's what it should be. So I think we have those problems. Those are actually cultural problems. It's what we are living right now. It's a clash of civilizations, it's nothing else. Look at how divided are the vote. It has become a fight of the West versus the rest. And we need to be extremely careful. Even the ones that actually think, oh, the West, we are better, and ultimately we are going to beat the global South. Because we are rich, because at the expenses of the others. Because we've been containing them, and we need to keep them poor. The climate change agenda, just to limit their pollution, CO2, CO2 emissions, part of that. Keep creating chaos there. It's part of that. But it's not working. It's not working. This is an inflection point. The real inflection point, I said it last time, was Ukraine. You have NATO, which is losing it against Russia. Even though Western media, they don't want to admit that. But it's reality. They're losing and they're losing badly. And now they're, they're, there is enough ramp in Israel, 
That's why we don't hear about what is happening in Ukraine. What is happening in Ukraine has made the African countries to be more emboldened, has made, has made BRICS to be emboldened just to ditch the US dollar. You see, that's an inflection point. And maybe, maybe what is happening in Palestine is part of that. The world is shifting. But the many countries are just in the middle. You don't want to go all the way. Many countries, you need to think about national interest. Don't be stupid. Don't be too stupid. You know, even though some countries you might you might just really question. You know, I, I question India siding with Israel. What the F are you siding with Israel? Israel is the symbol of US empire. But guess what? I think it's a it's a populist move. Because Pakistan is the enemy of of India and Pakistan is backing Palestine, but well, you don't want to be on the same side as, as Pakistani. And because it's Hindu in his nationalistic government. It looks good to be, you know, anti-Muslim. So it's an inflection point. Things are changing, shifting slowly. And then you have this desperate globalist elites that are actually struggling. And I want to repeat every time, it's not about countries. Who controls the countries in the West? All politicians are controlled by the globalist elites. The globalist elites are the biggest families, you know, they're still there, but you don't see them. The real power lies into the Rockefeller, Rothschild, Bill Gates, and so on. Those have the real power. And you have the uh, multinational corporation. They don't care about countries. They, you know, they, you know, those people have enough money. They can move their assets the way they want. You know, they, they absolutely don't care. So, yeah, maybe I was thinking, uh, maybe I can go through, I can go through, maybe, let's see, uh, I was thinking of going through maybe uh, feeds, maybe Twitter feed. I, I want to try this. I've never done it before. But let's see, let's see if we can see what is happening in the world just uh, shortly. This is my Twitter feed. Uh, in the meantime, you know, uh, we can do this for 10 minutes or so on, and maybe we I can take some questions later. Uh, so here we have a WikiLeaks. Uh, you know, WikiLeaks, there, you know, if you can check on my Twitter account, Angelo for Justice Free. Uh, well, here you have WikiLeaks documents that actually tells you about uh, how Israel was actively supporting Hamas. Uh, then you have, uh, this is uh, SL Kantan, actually, this is a very interesting video about uh, how actually they were uh, since uh, 1967, I mean, since 1948, they instigated, Israel instigated all those wars uh, for the purpose of uh, of grabbing more land. You know, that's, that was a single purpose, grabbing more land. Then it's interesting, you, you got Spain, actually, that is a... Uh, they wants wants to suspend the diplomatic relationship with the Israel. That is very interesting time. And I think we need to pay attention to those moments where you, you know, you have countries just in between that are going to shift. They're going to shift either towards breaks or you know joining the Belt and Road Initiative or actually starting to get away from the U.S. dollar. Uh, Jackson Hinkle, you got Republicans once war against Gaza. Democrats wants war against Russia. You see, that's the difference between Republicans and Democrats. It's a uh, one wants to go first, you know, against uh, Palestinians and uh, and uh, in China, and the Democrats have a more focus on Russia. But they are all ma uh, war monger. And then he says, uh, communists like me want war against the American deep state. Well, you see what. <laughs> You know what? Americans really, they, their real enemy is the 1%. You know, it's a fight between the 99% the to the 1%, you know, not left and right. 
So that's a video, you know, of uh, Biden is completely lost. And it's actually, it's interesting. Look at that. You got Biden, you got Blinken on the back and he's at the toilet, at the loo, right? And you have Biden on the front who's mumbling, I don't know what. And Blinken cannot come out. So he's stuck at the bathroom, just on the back. That's so funny. And, and, you know, I mean, it's pathetic. It's embarrassing for Americans to have a president like this, you know. Uh, then you have uh, always like very interesting posts. You know, if you follow Arno Bertrand, he's got some really interesting posts uh, on China. And this is like the debt trapped, you know, uh, fallacy. You know, I mean, it's just a, it's all fake news. You know, the, you have this person saying, well, China is giving debt trap. Uh, China is not giving debt trap, actually. First of all, countries go to China for with viable projects. China analyzes it. And China gives long-term loans, and uh, you know, while the IMF gives short-term loan, and China gives like much cheaper interest rates than than the, the IMF and the World Bank, which are institutions controlled by the collective West. And I, I'm quoting here: this is a this is an article of Reuters. Reuters admits that actually the condition that China, of loans that China gives are much more favorable. What do we got here? Yeah. Uh, so Putin is saying that uh, they are going to be more aggressive and they are going to have uh, uh, on the uh, above the Black Sea more Russian fighters carrying Kinjai missile. So keep in mind that Russia is uh, actually number one in the world when it comes to hypersonic missiles. So that's what I said just before. Welcome to the West and its standards. You can burn the Quran, insult two billion people, but you cannot protest for peace. And they are going to make it illegal. You'll go to jail. It's a matter of time. But guess what? Today is the Palestinians that are protesting for because they want peace. Tomorrow is going to be you. So that's the fight for all of us. Interesting, you got the uh, president of El Salvador. Well, actually, you know, I mean, you you, you know, he's actually uh, kind of supporting uh, Palestinians. Uh, what you got? What well, tensions here in uh, in Europe? And I think we need to be extremely careful. What they want to do is a strategy of tension. How do they do it? There's a Palestinian conflict, but at the same time, they're accepting illegal immigration. You see. We need to be careful how we see illegal immigration. Illegal immigration is actually pressure on salaries, and that's for the benefit of the global corporation. And it's also to create tension within society. Now, when you have writers like this, what happens is that people at some point, they'll ask the government, oh, can you be more tough? And then you turn more into a police state. Well, it seems like things are happening uh, in... Uh, Occupied territories, you know, actions, they are arresting people. My friend Brian Belletics, Israel demands that Gaza hospital move already condemned uh, hundreds of deaths. Recent strike only accelerated the process of targeting civilians, including hospital patients. I do not recall a war where you have bombing of hospitals like this, I don't recall it. But again, Israel does that because it has the tacit approval of the collective West. So the collective West is a compass of a genocide. You got gunfights happening right now. This is, uh, I think it's Bethlehem, is it? No, this is the West Bank. So keep in mind right now, well, the best West Bank is controlled by Fatah and actually now there's a there is a probability that, that Mahmoud uh, Abbas, uh, Abbas, Abbas who, who, you know, the, the leader of, of uh, the Fatah, who's in Ramallah, he has people, uh, his population that is actually turning against him because they want the Fatah to join the fight with the Hamas. And, uh, and again, you know, the purpose was of the Israelis was to divide the Palestinian population between the Fatah and the Hamas. 
I am going to leave it there. Uh, maybe I'll take a few questions. You guys should shoot me some questions. I'm going to read a, a little bit your, your comments. Your comments are always valuable. I like this format. Also, keep in mind, just if you can give me some input, uh, do you like actually the, the 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 input with the Twitter? You know, if we can go through Twitter. I mean, that this is where you get most of the news. And and keep in mind, Twitter right now is the only space where you have, I mean, large space where you have alternative voices. The other spaces, you know, Rumble and so on, or they say, uh, we can go there, but it's not, you know, um, not many people are active there. I mean, uh, you know, there's not much view. But the biggest platform right now, and where you really have news, actually, it's Twitter. I don't know for how long, but at least right now, that this is where you can you can have a, a, a lot of content. And also Telegram, too, by the way. I am a Jew, and I condemn the state of Israel and every single Israeli. Yeah, I... I uh, I would say the, the, the Zionist, you know, I'm, I'm probably lots of uh, Israeli are well intentioned, you know, and, and I'm, you know, I'm for the existence of state of Israel. I mean, I, I'm not that radical, but when I see that, when I see what is happening right now, I'm asking myself, do they really deserve a state? You need to change the fundamentals of that state when it's ethnocentric. And you deny the existence of Palestinians, but you actually treat Arab Israelis as second grade citizens, then you have a problem. You do have a problem. It's not sustainable. What do we got? Neocons really want to pro provoke Iran to the first move. Exactly, exactly. They want to put Iran in a position where Iran has to respond. And I just hope they won't take the bait. But the problem is that they are going to inflict so many, so much damage on Gaza, kill so many civilians that at some point maybe the Arab population, their people, not the, the leaders, you know, we have not no choice. But again, the Arab world and their leaders have a huge responsibilities because they did forget about about the Palestinians. See, they made peace with Israel. In, so, in some ways, it's, it's, it's good, you know, peace in the region. Why not? Maybe a decoupling, you know, like take Israel on the side and maybe Israel might not side completely with the U.S. I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to say, hard to tell. But that's at the expense of the Palestinian people. And the Palestinians have been betrayed. It's not the few millions that you give in aid to Palestine from those those. Arab regime that's going to make a difference. At the end of the day, Palestinians are living in a in an open air prison, in concentration camps. The only difference with the Holocaust is that this is a slow death and a humiliation, a life of humiliation. When you have Israelis calling Palestinians civilians, beasts, and animals, that tells you about the culture of the Zionist project. What do we got? Decanate, degenerate, degenerate West works with emotions. Exactly. But again, you know, I, for me, if the, if the West wants to be decadent, I mean, who cares? I mean, really, you know. But the problem is that what we have in the West is that it's a, it's a radical minority that is degenerates and it is a project of deconstruction of human being. You deconstruct a human being because you want to isolate the human being. Human being, when they're attached to a religion, attached to a nation, attached to tradition, attached to, to all this lifestyle, family values, you're not alone, right? Then you isolate people. You're from nowhere. You belong to nothing. You're just on your own. Here, just work. Be a slave, so spiritually empty. Because they want what they want of us. They want 
big market consumers slave labor. They see us as a market. Why? Because we are ruled by globalist elites, multinational corporations. In the middle, our leaders are just working for those corporations. That's why you have those lobbies. Those lobbies actually interface between our leaders and those big corporations. What do we got? Well, we got 45 minutes already. Question, will this conflict blow up into a full war or we still have a chance? I do want to believe we still have a chance, but uh, keep in mind, it is existential. This is a project that been, they have been working for decades. For those people, it's existential. And you know what? They can destroy everything, but ultimately they will still be well off. Actually, some people, some of those elites, they actually win out of destruction. You see, you destroy everything, but you still have gold, you have assets. Everything will be distressed. Distressed meaning what used to be worth 100, then it's worth 10, and you come in and just buy it. Same as they did in Ukraine. BlackRock, the came in and just bought the land for a penny. That's how it works. So even if they don't win, but ultimately they'll be as powerful. They make the rule of the game. And they are stateless, you know. You know, they have offshore entities and that's how it works, you know. But average Joe that is, has a life, has his home, has a community and so on. He will have his life destroyed. He can lose everything. Some will die. But the globalist elites, they will be always there. They were there before World War I, World War II, and now they're still there. But you don't see them. You don't see them. But they are extremely powerful. Uh, soon in U.S. Parliament, we have an intel that is a weapon of mass destruction in Iran. Absolutely. Absolutely. But this is the purpose. This is, a, you know, if you read Noam Chomsky, you know, there's a book, very good book. It's about manufacturing consent. It works at the subconscious mind. Some are actually deep, deep. Some, you know, you are brainwashed through history, through history books, what you learn at school. There's a political agenda in our history books, you know. Keep in mind that history books are not written by historians. Very often, they are written by politicians. You know, World War II, was written by politicians. And the winner gets to write history, right? Then you have Hollywood. Hollywood, you know, you've watched your whole life. Your whole life. If you're a Westerner, all your life you watch movies where the Arab, the Muslims, the Russians, the Chinese were bad guys. Well, you know what? Average Joe, even if, if he might know that, that, but that subconscious mind, his reaction deep inside is like, oh, oh my God, it's bad. Russia, bad. Chinese, bad. Muslim, oh, bad. Terrorist. Well, we, of course. Have you ever seen a Muslim being cool in a movie? A Chinese being cool in a movie? No, you don't. Why Fatah and Abbas don't join the Gaza res resistance now? That's a big question. And I think Abbas might fall might fall you see there was a comedian actually on the on pierce morgan show he actually said he, he compared he said if you are palestinian you have two choices you have the hamas but hamas is actually fighting a war of liberation might not be your friend but he's fighting the war of liberation and you're in the same prison right radical or not He's still fighting for the same war as me. And then the other is the one that holds the key of the prison that has been humiliating you and treating you like an animal all your life. Ask yourself a question. If you were Palestinian, you went through all decades of humiliation. They came into your house, they stole your house. Maybe they kill your kid. They put you in prison and they torture you. They kill your kid. Just think for a second. Would you do nothing? Would you ask the UN for justice? Would you take up arms? Or would, would you be beheading whoever did that to you? I tell you, 
most of us civilized we consider ourselves civilized we won't be civilized touch one hair of my son and i tell you you might you might turn me into a beast and i challenge you to lie to say that you will do nothing and you will seek peace no you seek revenge and what people want is dignity palestinian fight is about dignity you came into my home i lost my dignity and you're treating me like a beast every single day and you call me a terrorist taking up arms that's legitimate like or not hamas i did expose hamas of course i don't you know i have questions about hamas i didn't like when hamas joined isis to fight syria but right now you know what history will tell us if hamas was a good choice keep in mind that nelson mandela movement was labeled terrorist movement they were actually doing terrorist acts in, in south africa well you know well you know history is telling us that actually mandela mandela was the right choice Well, I, I think we are close to one hour. I'd like to thank you guys. Uh, this channel has been demonetized. Uh, so if you want to support me, you know, you, I, I'll put the link. Patreon, buy me a coffee. You know, it, it's always nice, you know, to have some support. Also, if you can like and share, you know, if you cannot contribute financially, you can li like and share. And also, please put in the comments, just if you like the formats, any suggestions, uh, I try to do this uh, on a daily basis. Um, this is a hard time, you know. It's not. It's not fun. Uh, really, not fun. This is a very serious uh, topic. But what I'd like to do is keep on. Um, I, I keep on traveling. So right now I'm in India. I keep on making videos. I want to talk about geopolitics. Maybe some things a bit lighter. If if hopefully the you know ge geopolitics will be we be more peaceful and also also share my, my travels uh, and also because my purpose is somehow i think because i live like 30 years abroad how i can actually do some bridging you know somehow it's a, because you know it's a, because ultimately i i do think that we are we have so much in common we are seeking for the same thing nobody wants war everybody wants peace we want mutual development and we are all victim of a system that actually want us to go to war because uh, they don't go to war. The 99% go to war. It's the but the, the one percent they're just watching. Anyway, thanks for your support. And um, well, I'll try again tomorrow. And maybe maybe I'll do a live streaming with uh, Brian Belletic. I'll check these days. Uh, maybe on the new Atlas or him on my channel. Anyway, peace, stay safe. And there's a message. If you can give a message right now to the whole world is go out and say, tell them, stop Gaza genocide. What is happening now is the same as those Germans that stay silent when they were committing crimes against the Jews. Now is the time to speak up. Speak up. Okay? So you stay safe. Bye-bye.